Hi, and welcome to a very big Valentine's Day show. My funny Valentine, sweet comic Valentine, you make me smile with my heart. And then the lyrics kind of deteriorate after that, Meredith, so I don't know. If Guys, he know. needs no well, introduction, oh, yes, but I it do. is I need Pete Caldera. <laughs> Beat writer for the record, he also sings at the Carnegie Club in New York City. Beat writer by day, Sinatra singer by night. How does that even happen? Best of both worlds. I get the baseball and the and the nightclub stuff. It's a, yeah, no, it's it's a lot of fun doing that, uh, burning it on both ends of the the candle per se. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and I'm great. I'm so thrilled I get to do both. And talk about the best of both worlds. I woke up today and I was like, maybe I can get Pete to serenade me <clears throat> for Valentine's Day. And it is happening, <laughs> folks. Not only did I spend my ninth consecutive Valentine's Day right in, at GMS with the New York Yankees, but now this. How does a girl get so lucky? Oh, well, uh, uh, just don't tell my wife about it. That's all. <laughs> is she watching this? Hi, honey. I'll, I'll sing to her when I get mean. home. Yes, thank you very much. I also I bribed you with wine, yeah, a, food, and these were supposed to be chocolate-covered strawberries, but I almost burned down the entire floor of my condo building. But it smells so. fabulous, uh, I, 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 and I love what you've done to, with the place. It's, oh, uh, thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. We're, we're here almost every Valentine's Day. I know. We <laughs> had a party a couple years ago because for all the losers who couldn't be with their loved ones <laughs> on right. Valentine's Day. And we were a part of that. And you did such a beautiful job. And, and right. And we all had a place to go because, yes. as you know, in Tampa, if you're down here for spring training or really any time, uh, I, I think Anthony McCarron was the one who pointed out that uh, they build homes in Tampa without ovens so everyone's <laughs> at, at, uh, out at, and it's hard to get a, a reservation and it's impossible to get a restaurant reservation in Tampa on, on Valentine's Day. Day. So you're, you're doing a great public service uh, uh, having me here. Now we had a good friend here, Christy Ackert, the New York Daily News, and she told me that your plans are very special this year. You are third wheeling it <laughs> with her. You're, you're going to be the imposter of her Valentine's Day. I'm going Day. straight to uh, the uh, new Clancy uh, Ackert abode, and uh, yes, and we're going to have dinner. I haven't, I haven't seen the place yet, uh, so I'm looking forward. Uh, to that, to get the whole Florida tour when, you, when you're down here in the Tampa Bay area for spring training. You know, since we're on the subject of Valentine's Day, obviously, we've got, we've got some hearts. We have kisses, 25 cents, people. What a steal. <clears throat> get in on that. Uh, I'm sure people want to know about, set up, yeah. about Brendan Cuddy, who was on yesterday. Is there any update? Did he find himself a date? Unfortunately, Cuddy's still dateless for this Valentine's Day. We are hopeful 2021 is the year for Cuddy. Uh, Lindsay Adler will be on tomorrow. We are going to work on setting up a profile for Brendan Cuddy, trying to get him some dates down here in Tampa. Do you think we'll have any success? Uh, you know what? I, I'm sure you know he's a, he's a very personable guy. Nice and, dude, uh, right? Yeah, he's you know he's he's fun. I'm sure. Listen, it, it can't be. Can't be that tough. And then listen, uh, but you know, I think Cuddy does pretty well on his own. I'm I sure. think so too. I think he tries to pretend. Yeah, that he's not you're right. He some just fun. does that whole shy bit, and he's fine. Okay, I'm sure people want to hear about baseball, right? Yeah, uh, I'm assuming so. You know what? I think that's what they actually pay us to be down do here they? for. So, no, yeah, they kind do. Of. They do. And don't forget, you can catch us on YesNetwork.com. Jack Curry and I are here up until the game start. Our first game is on Yes Network on the 22nd of I almost said January, 22nd of February. Oh, wait, if you're playing, at home, yes. And anything going on with your paper that people should know about? I was just going to say, if you're playing wiffle ball with Jack, I want to get in on that th this year. But uh, yes, well, we have, uh, oh, we're, we're open 24 hours at uh, NorthJersey.com and in the record, uh, USA Today Network. And um, I've got to promote my Instagram a little better. Maybe I can, you can help me with that. Yes, yeah, uh, so we'll tell, tell the people. Yeah, we'll tell a, yeah. the people. This should get a boost. I should get about 12 more people uh, after this. And that is exciting. Maybe I'll get one more <laughs> subscriber to this YouTube you channel. You do amazing. We hope so. We hope so. Okay, as far as Yankee Land is concerned, yeah. what were your takeaways from today? Well, you know, it was the first chance I got to see, uh, uh, it was a little hard to see because you're behind that fence, but uh, Debbie Garcia throw a bullpen today. That was that was fun, uh, and I, I saw, noticed that got a lot of attention. I'm not ignoring you. It's Twitter. just hot That's in here. I'm turning right. turning the air on. You Is can that do okay that with from you? your phone. Yeah, I'm gonna do um, it from my phone. I'm lucky if I can send a text message, and uh, so that that was interesting. And then um, you know, and it was the second day of uh, Garrett Cole throwing. Uh, we spoke to Jay Happ uh, mm -hmm. this morning about. Uh, you know, his name being, you know, sort of bandied about in trade rumors and how he dealt with that. And uh, 
Uh, and then uh, the the GM uh, spoke, and of course, uh, you know it's it, you know it's Astros, Astros the scandal. gift that keeps on giving, right? Every day all, there's a new angle, there's a the new time. wrinkle, and and yeah. the latest. You know, you had some people out with the Dodgers who obviously faced the Astros yeah. that were saying things like. Jose Altuve stole the MVP from Aaron Judge. Would you agree with that statement from Bellinger? Well, uh, listen, it's still, listen, I'm a, I'm a guy that, just to take it back a bit, votes in the Hall of Fame for, for some of the steroid guys, right? Mm -hmm. And we went through all that, and, and, you, and then you, you have to parse it out. Uh, all right, you know, Barry Bonds and, and Clemens are, are sort of in a class by themselves, and then there's the rest of the guys that, that maybe don't, uh, uh, you know, you know, cut the mustard there, but it, it, it was an error in the game you had to deal with. And now we're dealing with, you know, this this scandal. And it's, is it impossible to say how many home runs Altuve hit uh, uh, or how what how high his batting average was because he, he got this? But yes, but there was electronic sign stealing and, and cheating involved. And it does, you know, I wouldn't take it away from him, but it does tarnish not sure. only what he did that year, but what the team, the team did collectively. Have you ever cheated? Doing anything like on a test, on a <laughs> any like any any capacity. Boy, that's a that's a great uh, question. I don't know if I, uh, I'm, you're not. We're not. I'm not hooked up to a lie detector test here. Right? No, I, no. This is pretty uh, unofficial. Here. I don't think any of us has uh, led a, a, a completely uh, sterling pure, life right? to borrow John's last name. <laughs> but um, I, I I I hope uh, I've been honest in in uh, everything. We that, try. Uh, we, have we you ever try. done steroids? We, we try. No. No, I've never done steroids. I think I might have done them once, but because it's a different kind of steroids, like the kind when you have like I'm bronchitis or something like that. 150 pounds. No, like what's the kind that the doctor gives you when you're like sick, like that kind of steroid. Oh, that kind of steroid? Yeah, like no. I don't know. Not I, like the actual one that makes Then you I could have. I, no. Possibly. Yeah. Well, listen, they're... they're um, you mentioned John Sterling, and I know you I spend did. a good amount of time with him, as yeah. do I. Please tell me your favorite John Sterling story, because everyone has one. Favorite John Sterling story. We're having... About to have dinner in Baltimore, one of his favorite uh, restaurants, uh, the Prime Rib. <laughs> and uh, John, Been there John, <laughs> if you if you have dinner with John and you're lucky enough to do it, and he is the greatest dinner companion. So good. Um, that uh, John usually gets to the restaurant early, and um, the first round of mar martinis are, are are always on John, uh, and uh, he's so generous and everything. But uh, so so this one time. I might have been there with Dan Barbarisi and a couple of the other writers. Uh, this was about five, five years ago. So uh, we come in. Of course, John is there, uh, already having his his martini, and he's he's just launches in to tell us about how. Um, now I can't do it as well as Hoke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was it, doing but, something. Uh, the other but day. Uh, my my faith in humanity has been restored this evening. You you have to hear what happened tonight. So I'm getting out of the cab. And I pay the cab driver, and now I'm almost to the restaurant front door, and some guy is yelling, sir, sir, sir. And I turn around, and he's waving a fist full of money in his hand, and he says to me, uh, this was in the cab, I think you dropped this. <laughs> So, First of all, who carries so this, a, a pants full of money, basically, a pocket well, full of money? Well, I, I didn't really want to give this a, a part away, but, uh, you know, John's not a credit card guy. He is not. Um, so, and, uh, and then... At the end of the uh, the first round, there John was picking the twenties uh, out of the hundreds and fifties to, to pay the the bar tab uh, for us. So that was he's that was it. That was a nice. that was a fun. So that that's that's just one story. But he's a generous, fun guy, and love going to dinner with him. And I don't think I've ever been a part of a dinner with John Sterling where I haven't had a great time. Like he is such, oh. a, such a storyteller, such a riot. The life of the party. And, you know, uh, it. and he's seen so much and uh, knows so many people and. You know, and we're both, uh, John and I, in our, uh, you know, well, we, John's what, about 80? I'm probably 92. Uh, musically, because, you know, I can, because I can talk to John about Johnny Mercer and uh, sure. Cole Porter and uh, uh, and Sinatra and Bennett and Darren and all those people. And uh, it, it's just, just fun to be in a conversation with him. Well, John's known for his home run calls, and, yes. and one that he obviously had was an A bomb for A Rod. And yes, A Rod. And back in the Good news. Segue. Back in the news today. How about that? Possible bitter for the Mets. Do you believe it? Do you want to see it? Why not? Why not? Um, listen, he 
Well, he always wanted to play with the Mets for yeah. the Mets, right? He was uh, he grew up a, 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 a Mets fan. He was, you know, he, he, you could talk to him about the '86 Mets and you know, jumping on his bed watching uh, you know Keith Hernandez and Ray Knight and all that stuff. So uh, why not? Listen, you know, he's kind of followed Derek Jeter a, a bit. You know, followed Jeter the Yankees. You know, could follow him into ownership. The funny thing is, Jeter now occupies. Alex's old his town, my yeah. yeah, Miami. Well, so, um, but uh, you know, New York is, is his town too, and uh, um, yeah, why not? That's that's a power couple that could uh, listen if they bring if they bring the money and they've uh, they they want to upgrade that team uh, more than it has been right now, and if Steve Cohen's uh, completely out of the picture. Why not uh, bring a Rod and uh, bring a conglomerate behind him? And uh, I know he'd want to be competitive right away and and, and want to win in New York. That is going to be a, a lot of money uh, to have, <laughs> to right. have a, a stake in that. And I wonder if J-Lo would be singing the national anthem ever. I think that'd be a great idea. I think though. it's a great idea. That, you know, it's great. It's, it's a hard song to sing. I've, I've, I've tried. How did you get into Sinatra? Well, um, my mom was a huge Sinatra fan. And um, she had the records when you used to play records. You remember those? You, I don't know oh, if yeah. you, 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 you... Come you, on, I know young. records. Well, anyway, I... And... Um, so I and there was a show on in New York. Uh, Sid Mark had a show on Saturday nights, and I, in my teens, I wasn't really doing much on Saturday nights. It's kind of home alone, kind of like Cuddy is right now. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, wow, that was great. Nah, he's out. I'm sure. Um, so I was listening to Sid Mark Sinatra. I I don't. I had grandparents that I adored, and you know, I listened to their music, and I, I just kind of gravitated to that. I wasn't really listening to whatever was on the radio. I was listening to that. But, uh, but when I got into singing, it was really down here in Tampa. Uh, Donatello's? Don, the first year I was covering the Yankees, uh, before I got with the record, I was with another newspaper, and I happened to be covering spring training in 2000, and I was with a bunch of the guys. Dom Amore was there. Um, oh, Dom. Uh, How uh, is Dom? Um, I haven't seen Dom's him Dom's great, covering UConn for nice. the Hartford Current. Um, and uh, so we had, a, we had a bunch of writers at a table uh, at Donatello's, and we were kind of near the the bar where the piano is, but uh, but in the dining room, so we could hear what was going on. And um, uh, so Miss Kitty, who is still there right now, the fantastic piano player, uh, great musician, uh, who's at Donatello still, was playing I Left My Heart in San Francisco. And we had a couple of bottles of wine in us, and we started a singing along. couple glasses, a couple bottles. Well, I mean, I'm talking, the table, the table. <laughs> I might have had one. Um, and so we, we started singing I left my heart in San Francisco. And then when we got to the blue and windy sea part, which kind of goes a little high, I noticed that everyone else had dropped out and now I'm the only oh, wow. person singing. And we're in the middle of a restaurant too, by the way. Uh, so I just kept going and I was either going to get thrown out or uh, <laughs> we we're all going to just leave en masse. But people applauded, <laughs> so like, so uh, into this. so maybe it was something. Uh, it was okay. Uh, so and then that's sort of how, how I think it was more started. than okay because not and only then, are you uh, at the Carnegie Club, yeah. but you're also. Do you still sing at Swing? Swing forty six occasionally, but that's not. Uh, I haven't done that in, in a while. But uh, on Wednesday nights you have the Stan Rubin Orchestra is still there, and uh, that's the the band I play with. Uh, I'm going to sneak away on March 7th for one night out of spring Ooh. training to do the, the two Sinatra shows, Steve, filling in for Stephen Maglio if, uh, if you're in New York on, on March 7th. To, Go see him. See and I feel like we've really just buried, buried the lead. How do they get tickets? Do you know? Uh, go to, uh, we call, call up the Carnegie Club. It's on uh, West 56th Street in Manhattan. I don't know the number offhand. But uh, the, you, you can, uh, yeah, you need to have reservations there because the, that's their, they get pretty that's, full their there. Yeah, that's their, uh, that's their, that's right. their that, that is the go to Sinatra show in, in New York, and it's with a fantastic Stan Rubin Orchestra, 11 piece band. I don't know how they, they squeeze all those that's great. musicians I've into been that there small times. space. It is pretty and, awesome. And, and still, I'm, I just got a plug, and especially because it's Valentine's Day. Bobby Valentine, when I was covering the Mets, he had a big. Big influence on uh, really? on my singing career um, because uh, when I, then I, I got the Mets beat in in late 2000 and we were in San Francisco one night on Bobby's birthday and uh, 
couple of us had a drink with him in the bar, and then we went across to Lefty O'Doul's, which was a piano bar, and Bobby threw a $50 bill in the, uh, in the guy's till and said, let him sing anything he wants. And, uh, and that's how that kind of got started, because he introduced me to Willie Rizzo, who was Jilly Rizzo's son, and he was uh, Sinatra's best friend for about the last 20 years of his life, and he had a club in Chicago, and then I sang there. So. That's crazy. It's how all it, interconnected. How it all works That's how out. the baseball music baseball, thing works out. Baseball, Sinatra. Incredible. I don't want to say we buried the lead, but I am sitting next to a famous person. Stephen Colbert had you on. They don't have just anybody on there. That's a pretty he big didn't have, deal. He didn't have red wine in the green room, though. You know, he doesn't have to broadcast uh, like I do. That was fun. That was the day after the, I ran the marathon for the first and what possibly we, last time. What don't you do? Okay, so we're marathon, I, beat writer, Sinatra you. singer, um, connoisseur of red wine. I don't ask uh, as, uh, I, as good a questions as, as Hoke and uh, Ackert do on, on this beat. That's oh, what I don't do. Uh, and Bolin. Uh, but uh, they... Uh, it's fun being with that group, but that no. Getting back to uh, Colbert, yeah, they I don't know, they they called they they were they needed somebody to sing a Sinatra song, and it was the day after the marathon, and I had planned on being home uh, with my feet on the couch for the entire day, Meredith, because I just I could not walk. The hardest thing I did um, all year was attempt to negotiate the stairs down the uh, 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 to the subway to get to the Ed Sullivan Theater. But that was, uh, it was a lot of fun. His staff is fantastic. Uh, Jean-Baptiste and the band are sensational. Uh, what great musicians, what a great staff, what a lot of fun that was. And his writers are obviously uh, off the charts, hysterically funny, great, brilliant. And it was amazing to be a part of you know, how they put together a television show. A little different than this, right? A little, <laughs> a little different <laughs> than this. No, like I said, they didn't have wine. They didn't attempt to make right. uh, and what the heck? Whatever it was you next, were attempting making that, time, that you that blew up in the oven, that was my, good. My condo down. Yeah. Um, next time, tell them to get you a car. You made you take the subway. Come on. I live three subway stops away from from the theater. I wasn't gonna. If I took a car, it would have taken longer to get there. That's fair. Okay, he clearly has a name for his show, but people want to know what the name of this show what is. This that's what, is? what is this? What would you call it? Uh, I would have said Mornings with Meredith, but uh, we're in the afternoon, so uh, what, 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 <laughs> right now it's 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 kind of like uh, Meet the Beat right now, yeah, right? right? With uh, well, Cuddy no, and people, Hulk and Adler. People have and told me that they really enjoy getting to know some of the behind the scenes stuff of some guys that are covering the Yankees, and ladies, I should say, that are covering the Yankees, because you don't generally get to hear from you guys, and when you do, it's all straight Yankees. So hearing a little bit about your background, according to people that have been commenting, they've really liked it. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm glad, and I'm thrilled you had me on. Thank you, thank you for coming on. Uh, if you have an idea for the name, or what we should name this, any other guests you'd like to see, please comment, let us know if you like it, subscribe, and Pete, I'm going to ask you one more time. What do you got? Will you serenade me out of this show? Oh, let's, what's, what's a good out cue song? I, I used up my Valentine's well, happy song. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy first. Valentine's Day, Meredith. Mm -hmm. And I would say, uh, uh, I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through and that's the highest note i can probably hit tonight because i need to warm up a little more oh my fault i should have given no you it's not your fault it was the i no it was the, it was a gross it's oversight the, it's the humidity all right bye Good thanks night. for watching happy valentine's day <laughs>